Hello, we are Group 20 and our project title is Holistic NC, an analysis of NC County education rankings and histor historic Rosenwald schools by Sophie Adgate, Osir Black, Jennifer Eastside Perez, and Caitlin Tuttle with team leads, Alec Greenwald and Dr. Amy Swain. For some historical context, between 1912 and 1932, Julius Rosenwald partnered with Ed Booker T. Washington and other Black communities across the South to fund the first public schools for Black Americans. North Carolina was home to more than 800 Rosenwald schools, which was more than any other in any U.S. state. Decades later, the practices of Rosenwald educators continued to serve as an inspirational model for addressing the holistic needs of public school students, families, and educators. Holistic refers to educational practices that cater to the whole child. Our research question is, can implementing Rosenwald schools, holistic practices in North Carolina schools address structural inequities and improve student learning outcomes? Our problem statement focuses on school rankings in North Carolina, North Carolina that do not provide a comprehensive analysis of how structural inequities impact student learning. Finally, our hypothesis is, if if school districts in North Carolina could draw on more holistic practices of Rosenwald schools, structural inequities would be addressed and student learning would improve. Okay, so we used a combination of qualitative and quantitative analysis to do this project. Um, the first piece is the qualitative analysis, and that is learning how to teach students in a way that does not ignore other variables that impact student learning. Um, and that is going to be inspired from the Rosenwald schools. The other part is kind of a policy piece, and we're going to be analyzing um, the way that North Carolina currently ranks schools and to get a better idea of how students are actually doing, um, which is the quantitative analysis piece. So for the quantitative research, um, the assessment that we looked at is called the Roadmap of Need Assessment. Um, it is from 2023, and this is an assessment that ranks the quality of education in North Carolina counties from best to worst, and it uses a variety of standardized test scores and graduation rates. Um, to analyze this, we first created a model that can predict these outcomes, which we did through a few steps. Uh, first, we cleaned and organized a variety of data sets, such as percent homelessness in each county, percent uninsured, percent poverty. This is from all 100 North Carolina counties, and we put around 30 data sets into an inclusive CSV file. The next thing we did was called multiple linear regression, which analyzes the impact of each variable on the rankings. Um, you can see one example of this um, in the middle of the poster, where you can see that as the percentage of Black students at a school county increases, the school rankings get progressively worse, um, which indicates a flaw with this measurement, um, or with, with the ranking measurement. Um, to eliminate some of the 30 variables we tested for to make a better model, we first eliminated any with collinearity. We also calculated the variance inflation factor and eliminated BIS over 10. We also completed an ANOVA test and eliminated all variables with a p-value over 0 0.05. So we were left ultimately with 11 variables and a model that can predict student outcomes with 67.7% accuracy. We verified that this model is um, with fewer variables works better um, than the one with 30 variables. And we used AIC, BIC, RMSE, and R squared, um, basically just a bunch of tests to ensure the um, the efficacy of this model. Um, so after making a model that predicts outcomes, we, we were able to identify the residual of each of these counties. That is to say that we found the difference between the model predicted outcome and the actual outcome that comes from the rankings. Uh, so with our new rankings that you can see um, at the top of the poster in the middle, um, the new quote unquote best school is the school that has the greatest positive difference in outcomes than the predicted outcome. Um, so the clear differences between the rankings, how you can see that the top 50 on the left side are all in green. And then when you, you know, essentially neutralize the effects of, you know, the presence of structural inequities, you can see that all of the counties are, you know, mixed up and they're just completely different. Um, so and you can tell that, you know, these rankings, the, the, the rankings that use uh, standardized test scores and graduation rates and racialized forms of measurement such as that, um, you can see that it is really only a measure of community affluence. And then when you neutralize the effects of structural inequities, it just completely changes. Um, so this is kind of the beginning steps of what um, performance measures could look like if we actually considered the presence of structural inequities. Um, but it's important to note that we are not advocating for you know this form of measurement as a complete form of, of um, you know, school analysis, basically. Uh, so now I'm going to pass it to Jen. She's going to tell you about the Rosenwald schools that we want to learn from, schools that have taken a much more nuanced approach in the way that we teach children dealing with structural inequities. Okay, so for the qualitative results, the shown photo below is a picture of the Ro Russell School in Durham and C, one out of the three counties chosen to be featured in our website. 
We've inter interviewed fellow Rosenwald alumni and have chosen the following quote. I remember that I wanted to make perfect attendance. I didn't want to miss any school days. That's because that's where my friends were. Where my teachers embraced us, it was almost like family. The quote exemplifies our holistic theme, teachers focusing on and connecting with their students to ensure success. Our team has concluded that the North Carolina rankings need to account for the student as a whole to meet their needs to succeed. Rosenwald schools serve as a model for overcoming challenges through holistic education practices that secure the well-being of the whole student. We want to thank everyone who has contributed to our project. Thank you.